Why don't we just lift up our hands? We are gathered here because of Him. And it's only because of Him that we are gathered here. There's nothing more, nothing that can satisfy our hearts. David says in the book of Psalm 108 verse 12, Send us help from heaven against the devourer, against the enemy. For the help of man is vanity. In Kenya, we have many needs. So when we raise up our hands, it's because we have tried all other things. We have tried all other avenues. We have exhausted all that we know. But our hands, when we lift up our hands, we see miracles. God moves. And he's saying to you tonight, he's ready to move. God is ready to move in your life tonight. God is ready to change your situation tonight. He is ready. He's just waiting for a willing heart to call unto him. Don't get tired of lifting up your hands. Don't get tired just worshiping him and telling him he's worthy and telling him he's holy and tell him he's all that we ever needed lord you are all that we never needed you are all you are everything you are everything lord and we come to a place where paul says i've come this far because you are with me and i realize we've come this far because the lord god has been with us and we can move to another point because god is with us and he is for us. And he is on our side. Why don't you give him a mighty hand clap tonight? Why don't you rejoice unto the Lord? Why don't you rejoice unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Give him a mighty hand clap. Give him a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. It's good to be here, but just before we sit down, I want us to do something. In Africa, there are lions, and when a lion roars, that sound can be heard around five miles from where it is roaring. So I want us to roar the name of Jesus this night. Amen. I'm going to count one, two, three, and we are going to shout the name Jesus. Are we ready? Are we ready? On a count of three, one, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You can have your seats. Thank you so much. My heart goes to all of you guys. I was here in 2018 when everything was crumbling down. I was going back to Kenya to close an orphanage. But you guys said... You are not going to close it down. We are going to take care of those kids. So my heart goes out to you. And my heart also goes out to Pastor Marco and all the leaders serving in the church. We are blessed to have you. And may God bless you. Uh, tonight I'm going to share something. Little I learned in uh, Mexico. They call it poquito. Is that Spanish? Yeah, they call it poquito. So I'm coming from Africa so that, you know, I'm struggling here because I, I speak three languages. So I have to get a word. I have to get a thought from my mother's native language. Then translate that thought to my national language, which is Swahili. And then translate that thought to English. That God will take us through. Amen. So, I want us to go to our Bibles, to the book of Acts, chapter 28. We're going to do Acts 28, from verses 1 to 6. Verse 1 says, once we were safe on the shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by heat, 
beat him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his head and said to each other, A murderer, no doubt, though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Father, we thank you for the word today. That as we get to get into this word, Lord, just give us the revelation what you want us to learn for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to speak to us something little about the final stretch. When everything comes to an end, there is a place that is called the final stretch. Finishing a, ta a task or achieving a dream is what counts. Doesn't matter how many things you start. Doesn't matter how many endeavors you engage yourself into. But at the end of the day, there will be a question, did the sheep dock? Life is not measured by how many tasks or vision we cast, but, but, why, but what we get to achieve. If you are going to do something, do it all the way. If you are going to do something, you're going to do it all the way. Someone said that, and it is evident today, that not every hen that lays eggs gets them hatched. So if you had an egg today, you just stopped a cycle. But we'll pray for you. <laughs> Second Timothy, Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the rest, and I have remained faithful. So Paul is coming from a point of, he started in Damascus, Paul has been in Corinth. Paul has been all over. He's gone to Ephesus. But he's now coming to a point where he's saying, I have fought a good fight and I have finished the race. And that is what maybe what we are waiting for. Aren't we waiting for that day? And I don't know about you, but for me, every day there is a passion to move. There is a passion to take another step because I'm waiting for that day when God will say, well done, my son. That is, if you are not living for that, then what are you living for? The day that God is going to say, well done, my son. And every time we have things, we have things that we start, we have endeavors that we put. But the, but the question will be, how can we finish what we started? That's what we are going to do today. And number one, how you can finish what you started is there needs to be a change. And someone say that change begins the moment you get courage and step outside of your comfort zone. That's when change begins, when you get the courage to step outside your comfort zone. Every time we maintain our status quo, we become like a tick. I don't know. When I used to take care of my grandfather's car, we used to go to every cow and every cow just taking out the ticks. Just taking out the ticks. Now, for people who are not growing, we develop this mentality of a tick. A tick doesn't go out to look for its own food. A tick is always dependent on what the cow eats or what it is feeding on. So, we are coming to a place, if you are going to be that person who is going to finish, you better get out and go and start getting your own food. Right? Paul has come to the, to the island of Malta. And on this island, the Bible says that the natives lit fire. And when they lit fire, there was a time this fire was not enough for Paul. There was a time this fire was not enough for all the people that were on this island. Something had to happen. Paul had to join them. He had to get out of his comfort zone, go out and help 
looking for wood. I don't know if you guys use wood here, but you guys have gas all over, so you might not understand <laughs> how wood works. Because you guys have a microwave, and you're standing behind a microwave complaining how slow it is. Well, it is slow, and you have to go out, go collect wood, and come back and cook. That's how fast a microwave is for us here. So uh, Paul decides that he's going out and he's going out to collect the wood. And isn't it amazing that we have some people that are still depending on their mother's prayers? Yeah, there should be people that are still depending on the prayers that are done here on Sunday. And then the whole week they're going to go back home, come back Wednesday. They're not going out to look for more wood. It can't take you that far. You must get out and go and look for your own wood. And this doesn't come until that time you realize you really need some more energy for yourself. You need to move to another level. A level that is going to take you to another step. Another step when you are going out to look for this wood. I know you'll go, you will get out and you will be on fire. But you remember you must have humility too. Paul has saved over 276 lives. It was a good time for him to sit back and say, well, I'm tired. All of you guys are going to die. But I came here and I saved you. It's now my time to rest and let you guys do the work. But Paul doesn't do that. He comes out of humility and he decides he is going to help them look for wood. And he doesn't stop there. Jesus says in Luke 22, 6, But among you it will be different. Those who are greatest among you should take the lowest rank and the leader should be like a servant. So Paul here, Paul is in a, he is in an iconic place. He has all the status. He has saved lives. But he decides, I'm going to help. I'm going out to help people look for wood. So I just want to let you know that when you are going out, when you are going out to find out this wood, that there are some challenges that are going to come back to your side. When you try to move to another level, when you are getting out of your comfort zones, you are going to experience some challenges. You are going, things are going to go against you. And so what you have to do when you are going to find wood, you must rekindle your fire. Yes, you must rekindle your Holy Ghost fire in you. The fire must burn. And I love the Hebrew word for fire. Hebrew word for the word fire is adira. And adira means strong, noble, and powerful. Strong, noble, and powerful. So Paul decides he's going out to look for wood. And then he goes out, he takes the wood and comes with the wood, then something happens. There is a serpent on his hand. I fear snakes. But this serpent is on Paul's hand because his hands are cold. Because the atmosphere around him is cold. Everything around Paul at this time is cold. And Paul is taking the wood to the fire. Be careful if you're not facing any attack. You have to be, you have to be very careful. I sum our lives in three places. It's either we are in the storm or we are just about to get into a storm or we just got out of a storm. So be careful if no one is attacking you. You have to be at a place. So Paul is holding the wood and the snake is dormant. Why is the snake dormant? It's because Paul is exposed to cold. And the snakes are dormant in cold places. The enemy is dormant in cold places. He is. 
if he's not attacking you, you better realize where you are. Because the enemy is going to stay cool where there is no fire. But Paul now decides, he takes another step. And he says, Paul says, I'm not going to hold on this snake. He doesn't realize the snake is there. And the snake is on his body. And sometimes some of us are walking with snakes. The things that are supposed to kill us. The things that are going to destroy us. The things that are going to bring us down. And we don't know we are holding on them because we are in a cold place. We are cold. We don't understand we have the poison. You don't understand it's going to kill you. You don't understand the danger is there. But you are comfortable. Be careful when you're in comfort places. Yeah, you have to be careful. Ephesians 6, 11 to 12. Paul says that be alert. And he says, finally, put on the full armor of God that you might be able to withstand the strategies of the enemy. God has a plan over your life, but the enemy also has a strategy. So if you are not putting on the full armor of God, you will not understand the wiles of the enemy. And he goes down there, he explains everything, for our war is not of flesh and blood. Amen? It's not of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against the mighty powers in this dark world. And against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. That is where our war is. David says that God has trained my hands for war. And my fingers for battle. Why would he train you if there was no battle? Why would you have the weapons if you're not going for a war? The problem with us, we want to be in cold places and we just want to step at a place where we don't understand. But our war, we have to take our war to the offensive side. Don't take your war to the defensive side because the enemy is going to get you unaware. And there is no trouble with that. So I came to let you know tonight that there is a war. There is a war, and there is a spiritual war. And the best thing that we have is regardless of the war that we are facing, we have the one who has won the battle. Now, when you are on fire, fire exposes danger. And we realize that the fire here is the Holy Spirit. It's going to go ahead of you and it's going to expose everything that is coming against you. For it's God is for you who can be against you. Because that is the fire. I, I got to have found this. That every bad situation is an opportunity for growth. Every bad situation that comes your way, it is an opportunity for you to grow. And now that the opportunity has been revealed, the snakes that come to harm you, once you expose yourself on fire, there is something that happens. The snake is going to bite you. It is. Because snakes, if you study about snakes, I don't know if there are people here. If you, if you do a little research about snakes, snakes live in fear. Right? And isn't that an amazing thing that the enemy, the devil, also lives in fear. The fear that God gave us was to fear him. But now the enemy takes everything that God meant for good and then he turns it around because snakes fear being bitten. And so in that moment of being scared, they're waiting for anything to happen. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of a sound mind. And that's where we are. And fire, in this in this text, we want, we want to take this word kaba, 
Kaaba is a Hebrew word which means do not extinguish. Kaaba, do not extinguish. And that is 1 Thessalonians 5.19 where Paul says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. That, that word quench means put off, extinguish. And we are talking about the Holy Spirit being fire. So when the Holy Spirit is fire, we need to make sure that we are always lit and our lives are always live. Deuteronomy 2.24, Moses continued, Moses continued, then he said, now get moving, cross Aaron and God. Look, I will hand over to you Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon. I will give you his land, attack him, and begin to occupy the land. But then if you go to Leviticus 6.12, it says, Meanwhile, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning, the priest and will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the burnt offering. Isn't it amazing? He says, each morning. Each morning, we have to put our fire on. We have to rekindle our fire on each morning, each morning. And you would say that was for the priest. No, he says here, and now you are the high priest right now. We are the high priest. So we have to rekindle the fire each morning for us to go on. The other one that I want to give us, there's a place here that really interests me. We must listen to God. We must listen to God. Success is not determined by what we see, but our response to God. It's not what we see. It's not what we encounter, but how do we respond to God? And that is the definition of that word success. I don't know what your dictionary tells you. But that's what my Bible tells me. Amen? So, there are things that are happening on this island of Malta that I want us to really concentrate. That this success, how do we respond to everything that comes our way? How do we respond to every trouble that comes our way? So, Malta means a place of rest. Malta could also mean honey. And Paul is in Malta, but he's not experiencing success. He's not experiencing rest. And I remember on my journey here, I had... This trip coming here was not easy for me. Uh, back in Kenya, we have our government, okay, they, they lifted this up, but we had a curfew. So our government realized COVID spreads much faster from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning. So from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., you are not allowed to be outside. If you are found outside that time, you experience the Kenyan police. Now, those are the people you really don't want to experience. They, they interpret the constitution differently. So, I woke up early in the morning that day that I was supposed to take my flight and I, I mean, I live far away from the city where the orphanage is. And someone told me, if you get to the checkpoint. So we have these county lockdowns that you cannot travel from one county to the other. So you cannot, so I was not able to travel from my city to where I'm supposed to take my plane. So someone told me, you can be there very early in the morning and uh, they will, uh, if you arrive there by 5 a.m., there is a change of guard and you can go through during that time. It's easy for you to pass there. Now, I don't have any presidential pass to pass there. So by faith, I took my tickets, 
and I was out. I left the house at 3 a.m., but I went through the forest, actually the jungle, so that I could make it through. So 3 a.m., I leave, and I come. I, I hit this stomach road at, 5 a.m. In the mo- at 4 a.m. in the morning. So I decide I'm going to drive very fast to make it there by 5. And something happens. Just 10 minutes into my drive, I hit a pothole. My tie is gone. I don't have a spare tie. So I stop there, and I ask God, really? What is going to happen here? What am I going to do next? And the Holy Spirit just told me, sleep. So I rolled my seat and slept. I woke up at 8 in the morning. Now I was like, I'm not going to make it. This is not going to happen. But the Spirit of God, or the Lord told me, keep on going. Don't give up. So, Everything, according to my plan, is gone. So, at 11 a.m., we managed to fix the tires, and I leave that place, and I'm just driving slowly. And I get to this checkpoint, and on this checkpoint, there are more than 40 cops. And they're stopping every car, every car. Very few cars, though, that day. And I'm driving, just going past there, and... No, none of them gets to stop me. And I just pass by. So I drive by with my windows rolled down, and I'm like, is this a trick or what? I didn't believe. Because we serve a God who does miracles. And I believe that point, he actually blinded those guys. They were not able to see me. So you see, at my point, according to my plan, I was, I have to be there by 5 a.m. But God says, you're not going to be there at 5 a.m. You're going to be there on my time. At the appointed time. That's where we get to see him. That's where we get to experience his power. The most productive parts of life will not be the prettiest. They wouldn't be. The most productive parts of your life are the parts that you go through pain, are the times you go through sorrows, are the time your pillow can define your tears. They can know. I mean, even your car staring, it can feel the pain because you keep on hitting it. That is when you decide that God is going to be my guide. And there are three things that are happening right here that I don't want you to lose me. There are expectations. And I know most people have come here with expectations. The Bible says in Jeremiah 15, 20, that they will fight against you, but they will not prevail because I've made you a fortified wall of bronze. They are going to fight. They are going to hit you hard. But one thing that we know is that they are not going to prevail against us. Is that they are not going to prevail against us. Our reaction to every spiritual attack determines our success. We must react to any situation that comes our way in the character of God. Every situation that comes our way, be it pain, be it joy, anything that comes our way, we must react with the character of God. And that's where we want to go. So there are three people here, or rather say three characters. There is a snake. There is Paul. And then they're the natives and those people who God, whom Paul saved that day. So these three people have three expectations waiting. After the snake had beaten Paul, there are three expectations. And in our lives, there will be these three expectations. The first expectation is the viper. That is the enemy. He has beaten you, and the purpose of the poison 
is to make you weak. So that once you are weak, he can attack you. That's the purpose. Why the snake has its poison is to make you weak so that by the time it attacks you, you are helpless. And that is the enemy. He tries to poison us. He tries to poison us. So the snake is in the first expectation. It is waiting for Paul to go down. And I don't know how many people here came tonight and they have been poisoned. And the enemy is just waiting for you to go down so that he can attack you. I'm here to tell you that you will not go down. You are going to stand and it is not going to work against you. Anything that he has against you is not going to work. The second group of people, these are the natives of this island of Malta. They did not understand Paul. They did not understand where he's coming from and they did not understand where he's going. So they say this guy was a murderer. This guy was a killer and justice is following him. They say the wheels of justice grind and then when they start grinding, no one can stop them. So they're thinking of Saul, but they're not seeing the revelation of Paul. That has happened to me. It has happened to some of us. There are things that we used to do which were not good. But we came to Jesus. He transformed us. And he gave us a new name, Paul. But that does not mean that the people who knew as Saul are going to know you as Paul. Just because they don't have revelation, they are not allowed to give you timelines. And they, they, they say, we are going to give him some few minutes. He's going to go down. They wait for one minute. He's not going down. They wait for two minutes. He's not going down. They wait for 20, one hour. Paul is not going down. How many people have been given timelines tonight? And there are people just waiting for you to go down. There are people waiting for your marriage to go down. There are people waiting for everything that you ever put your effort in to go down. But God says that today is not your day to go down. And the poison. We don't, we don't refuse or we don't deny the fact that the poison is already in our bodies. We don't, because the Bible says he will attack you. Yeah, the poison is already in our lives. But then what are we choosing to do about it? Paul decided and he did. And these people are waiting for him to go down. The snake is waiting for him to go down so that it can attack him and kill him. But Paul does one thing. He decides to react in the character of God. He decides to shake the snake. So when you are beaten one time, it is not about the poison. It is about what you do to the enemy. It is about what you are going to do to the attack. It is about what you are going to say to it. And then he decided to shake off the snake. He didn't choose to sit there and feel sorry for himself. He had to take an action and say, I'm going to shake it off. We have to shake off some things tonight. We have to shake off the fear tonight. We have to shake off the stress tonight. We have to shake off everything that has been perceived is going to kill us. But we have to shake it off. One thing I understood about Paul, when you are on your final journey, stretch is that Paul understood one secret. Before he was born, there was life. There was plans. 
there was everything written about him. And Paul knew he is going to Rome. You can see the passion of Paul going to Rome. So he understood that the poison was not going to kill him. If you have this word, if you have this word in you, it doesn't matter the amount of poison that is going to come your way. It doesn't matter the number of attacks that are going to come your way. What matters is that you have the word. And this word, Isaiah 46.10 says that he, he, he has determined everything from the end before the beginning. Before the foundations of the earth, he had it all done. So that poison is not going to kill you. You are just meant to stand strong and wait upon him. And he also says in Ecclesiastes 3.14 that whatever I have purposed shall be established. That nothing shall be taken from it and nothing can be added to it. So Paul understands that he is going to Rome. No amount of poison will stop him from getting to Rome. I just want to speak to you that whatever promise God has made to your life, regardless the poisonous situation you are in right now, it is not going to stop you. It is only going to make you stronger. It is going to open up a way for you. It is going to open up doors for you. It is going to reflect everything that the Lord God has in your life. No amount of poison is going to stop you. Whatever God has promised us, whatever promise that he has laid for us, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Whatever goals that you are setting in your life, and I don't know, maybe there are people who have set goals here. There are people who have said, I'm going to achieve this, I'm going to achieve that, I'm going to be this. You have plans. At the beginning of the year, you sat down as a family and you made plans. I'm here to let you know, it doesn't matter where you are. Right now, God is going to see you through. And whatever you have started planning must be accomplished. He must see you through. He will see you through. The problem is that we get tired and we start concentrating on the voices. We start concentrating on what other people have to say. We start concentrating on what the news has to say. We start concentrating on what the economy has to say. All these things can be poisonous to us. They can, it, it just, they can bring us down. They can, I mean, Bring everything that you have down. But God says, with the amount of love I have for you, with the care that I have for you, don't allow anything to distract your journey. Don't allow anything to stop you from where you are going. You have a goal. And I used to ask this. He says that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ever ask or think. And then you ask God, does God understand what I think? Right? Does he understand what I think? You know, you're trying to belittle God. You're like, does he really know what I think? But he says, even that mind that you are using to think, I'm the one that gave you that mind. thought go above or beyond what he has for you and I don't know if there is anyone here tonight you have been poisoned and there are people waiting for you to die you have been poisoned and there are people who have given you timelines there is a snake waiting for you to go down there is someone just sitting and he's giving you two minutes. 
He's giving you 10 minutes and he's saying, after 10 minutes you're going to go. You might have a doctor's report tonight. Or you know someone that has a doctor's report. I know here you don't. I arrived in this land and I realized in our country you have more faith. I experienced one of the people that came to the trip last time to Kenya. Ray, he, he experienced a miracle and he said, this land is full of miracle. I told him it's because you arrived at a place and there was nothing to hold on to. So we were stuck in an island in Buvuma and there was no water. Checked into this hotel and there was no water. So we were told, if you want water, go to the lake. Can you imagine you've checked in a hotel and there's no water and then they tell you, they give you buckets to go to the lake. This guy was tired and he came back to his room tired. He cannot go to the lake because we were taking a boat ride on that same lake and there were hippos all around. So you can imagine the thought of going to the lake infested with hippos. So I told him that is the time you reached to the end. And so at night when he slept, woke up in the morning, his basin was full of water, but his tap was closed. The water was high up. Yeah, I know you're looking at me, you're like, that's the God we serve. He provides. He provides in miraculous ways. And he had to come to Kenya to experience that. And in my country, we experienced a lot of that because we realized sometimes everything is gone. Sometimes there is no phone call to make a call. There's nothing. There's no one you can call to. But then we realize when we call on Jesus. And I don't know how many people tonight just want to say they want to call on Jesus. I'll ask you to run up here. If you are thinking that everything, you have exhausted everything, you have moved, you have tried everyone, but there is an answer tonight. There is a name that you can run to tonight. There is a name that you can run to tonight. You have been poisoned. You have been poisoned. But today is your day for freedom. Today is your day to walk out. God has given you this opportunity. God has given you this opportunity to come, to come, 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 come. Don't let us snake kill you. Come right now. Come to the Father. Up again. Throw my fears into the wind. I am dead. I still feel all of us that are seated in the back. Why don't we just stand up today and lift up our hands? This is a place of atmosphere. There are miracles in this place. There are miracles that are about to take place here, right now. So just start calling off the snakes. Start shaking off the snakes. And if you are not yet here and you feel you want to come, don't get scared. Just keep on coming. Just keep on coming. Just keep on coming. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. The Lord wants to meet you. The Lord wants to rescue you. It is in His presence that we get rest in his presence that everything is exposed it is in his presence when the Holy Spirit comes down he's able to move Father we pray that you are going to move in this place signs and wonders we expect tonight Lord we have nothing else other than you Jesus we have nothing else other than you Lord no other place to go to. We have exhausted every avenue. We have tried everything, Lord. But in you, in you, Jesus, we cry tonight. In you, Jesus, we cry tonight to you, Lord. 
that you will hear our voices. You will hear our cry. Why don't you just lift up your hands one more? I want to bless you. I want to pray for your families. I want to pray for a special anointing amongst families in this land. Everyone that is here, your family is protected. Your family is protected. The Lord is watching over you. The Lord is filling you again. Those that have been poisoned, those that feel that they are about to give up, the Lord God is resurrecting you right now. The Lord God is giving you hope. My Father, my Father, give them hope again. Restore their families. Restore everything. The plans they have, Lord, may you provide. May you provide. May you heal and set them free. These are your people, Lord. These are your people, Jesus. For there is none like you. We glorify you. We give you praises. In Jesus' name.